Hi guys, today I'll be taking a look at a clicky switch for gaming, the Kale Speed Pink. Let's get started. Now, I previously looked at the Kale Speed Gold, however, the Speed Pink uses a click bar instead of a click jacket, as you can see here. However, the Speed Pink isn't part of Kale's new Super Speed lineup, instead, the Super Speed Bronze is the only clicky switch in that lineup. Now, pricing-wise, these are $31 for 110 switches on Kale's website, placing these in the budget range. And this is what they look like when disassembled. Feel free to pause the video. Now, let's move on to the switch characteristics. On center key presses are very smooth with minor scratchiness present at very slow key presses. Off-center key presses are noticeably scratchier at slow key presses, although they get smoother the faster you type. Overall, these are decently smooth, they're not impressive, but they aren't horrible either. 6 out of 10. Now, according to Kale, these switches have an actuation force of 50 grams at 1.1mm and a bottom-out distance of 3.5mm. Now, in terms of the actual key feel, the high actuation point didn't concern me at all, which is in contrast to many other speed switches. Then again, this is a clicky switch and not a linear one. Also, unlike clicky box switches, the tactility on these was lacking, I could barely feel it. Now, I understand this is a clicky switch, but I expect a modest amount of tactility from clicky switches as well. Consistency-wise, they're okay, but they have two main downsides. Number one, they sometimes actuate before the click. Now, this is a well-known issue with clicky box switches, so I wasn't surprised, just disappointed. Number two, they sometimes chatter. Now, this is usually the case for aging switches, but these are brand new. So again, that's disappointing. I just hope it doesn't get worse with time. Overall, despite their downsides, I still really enjoyed them as a whole. I just wish they were more consistent. 7 out of 10. Now, sound-wise, they're pretty good given their click bar switches, so automatically they're better than click jacket switches. Overall, even though they're quieter compared to clicky box switches, they're still pleasant sounding. 7 out of 10. Now, take a listen and enjoy. Now, at first, these felt quite delicate to type on. It was something I got used to after a few hours, but they do feel slightly different to something like the Kale Box White or Box Pink. However, as I mentioned before, these aren't exactly the most reliable switches. They chatter and actuate before the click on occasion, so I don't recommend them for any sensitive typing work. With that said, they were pretty consistent in other areas, they gave me zero weighting inconsistencies and were relatively smooth in many of my typing sessions with only hints of scratchiness at most. Overall, whilst they can't be relied upon, they are still pretty good switches feels-wise, but that only counts for so much. 6 out of 10. Now for gaming, the thing they were designed for. So, how do they perform here? Well, straight off the bat, they aren't my number one choice for slower paced games, especially quieter games due to the clicking, which is really an annoyance in the background. However, they're a little better for faster paced games, but they bind ever so slightly at times, which always threw me off. That's right, the Switch designed for gaming doesn't perform well under pressure. Yeah, so much for a gaming Switch. Overall, and again, feels-wise they are great, but for actual gameplay, I can't recommend these unless you're a casual, non-competitive gamer. 6 out of 10. In conclusion, I think it's better for most people to buy a Kale Box White or even a Box Pink. This switch just doesn't make too much sense unless you can find them for a good price. The final score for this switch is 32 out of 50 or 64%, which is decent but not amazing. 
And that's the end of the review. Next time, I believe it is a top tier Gatron switch I'll be looking at. Anyway, until then, take care and goodbye.